Hey, Mike Rain here with Canadian Musician, and next to me is Chris Creer, our studio manager and engineer at Metalworks Studios in Mississauga, Ontario. How are you doing today, Chris? Thanks a lot for joining me. Great. How are you doing? <laughs> Good, man. And uh, so we're going to talk today about, uh, I guess, what bands and artists should know when they're heading into a recording session for the first time and how they should prepare themselves. So I guess... Chris, first of all, um, what I want to talk to, or first question is, as far as studio gear and equipment, um, a lot of bands maybe aren't sure of what is generally supplied by a studio and what they should bring in themselves, and I guess how often that changes from studio to studio. I guess, what are the basics you can go over as far as what an artist should make sure the studio has on hand and what they should be prepared to supply themselves? Um, so a, a big thing would be instruments. Um, they need to find out whether the studio has what they need in terms of a drum kit, bass, guitar. Um, and if not, you know, they, they need to bring their own and have it um, well maintained. Um, like for, for drums example, you may want, you know, new drum skins, um, not too new, not too old, you know. Um, for guitar, you want to bring extra guitar strings, things like that. Um, and uh, it, it's very important that, you know, a band could come into to a major studio, you know, and they, you know, they think that they can bring their mediocre drum kit, mm -hmm. but it'll sound great because there's great microphones, uh, great engineer, great console behind it. Um, when really, you know, 80 to 90 percent of it is is the actual drum kit itself yes. um, and the guy playing it. So, you know, it's really important um, to have to start with great instruments um, and a great player who can uh, who's well rehearsed knows what they're going to play um, and comes into prepare you know comes in prepared um, and then we capture that yeah, yeah. speaking of coming in prepared uh, musically I guess from your experience how, how rehearsed should a band be from song to song or part to part uh, do you think it's best to come in with everything down in your head as far as what you want to do, or is it best to leave some room for spontaneity? Um, I mean, it really depends on what your what your plan is and what what the type of music calls for. You know, if it's jazz, you know, you, you're gonna want you know a, a bit of spontaneity. If it's an indie rock band and they're on a tight budget. Mm -hmm then I'd say know exactly what you want to do and what you want to play and have it well rehearsed before you come in. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there's no, you know, the guitar player looks at the bass player and says, what note are you playing there? And yeah. um, you really want to iron out all those details. Mm -hmm. um, where if it's a bigger budget, uh, you may want to actually write in the studio. Yes. You know, it's a great place to write as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it just depends where you're at with it. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of uh, budgets, is there certain ways that a uh, a band, especially a young band, a band that's probably on a tight budget, is there ways that they can save money, whether that means recording at certain times of the day or certain days of the week? Uh, is there tricks that way that they can follow? Um, I'm, I mean, it varies greatly from studio to studio. Um, for us here at Metalworks, we have uh, huge discounts for indie artists. Um, I mean, we've we've recorded a lot of of you know big time artists we have over 160 gold and platinum records mm -hmm. awards um but we were a great place for for indie bands to come to and record um because we have engineers that you know they've seen both sides of it and they can really really help out with that and uh do you think it's advisable for a band to uh when they're shopping around for a studio the visit first and before they commit to a particular studio? And if so, what should they be looking for when they're here? Um, I mean, to a certain extent, it, it depends. You know, if, if they have a producer and they want to check out the gear and the live floor, um, then, you know, yeah, it's a good idea to come come check it out. But, um, I mean, these days you, you can see a lot on websites, uh, microphone list, gear list, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of bands might not know an SSL, you know, from from a Yamaha or, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. it, um, so, it, again, it, it depends. It depends where you're coming from. Yes. Right. But uh, it, it's never a bad idea to check it out. Yeah. And uh, I guess for a producer, when bands 
similarly are looking for a producer as is there guidelines they should follow as far as what they should be looking for in a producer or is it often best or maybe less expensive if they go with a producer who works in the studio um i mean again it varies greatly from producer to producer but um you know you want to find someone um someone who's great at what they do um and and you want to be able to to have someone that'll take your input and try it out like it's always you know especially as an engineer it's it's always good to you know whatever crazy idea the band comes up with mm-hmm. um you know it, i think it's always good to give it a try because mm-hmm. um, there is no wrong way to do things yeah. uh in this business and it's i think it's essential to, to try you know all options if if someone has an idea it's it's good to indulge them because mm-hmm. then they've you know they're not always thinking oh maybe we should have done it you know yeah. um always try it out and, and listen to it Perfect. Well, Chris, thanks a lot for uh, joining me today and for welcoming me into your beautiful facilities here. It's a real pleasure. Thanks for coming.